Hello. So in this video, we're going to go through the second of the four tissue types, and perhaps the most difficult of the four tissue types to identify because of the sheer diversity present within this category. So what we're going to do, just like what we did with epithelial tissue, is we're going to start from the top and discuss what makes connective tissue different than the other three tissue types. And then we'll start to get into the different subtypes of connective tissue, ultimately working our way through to the most specific connective tissue types you have and what makes those tissue types unique from the others. So we'll start with connective tissue as a whole. Now I did just mention how it's a very diverse set of tissues. A lot of these tissues look quite different from one another, but there are some big characteristics of all connective tissues. One, that they all have cells with fibers in a fluid-based matrix. That goes for all of these different connective tissue types. Does not matter whether it's loose connective, shown in bright purple, dense connective, shown in dark purple, cartilage in brown, bone in blue, or blood in red. They all have fibers, cells, in a fluid-based matrix. And not only that, but if you look at the characteristics that make epithelial tissue epithelial tissue, you will see that those characteristics are not present for connective, nor are the characteristics for muscle present in connective tissue or nervous tissue present in connective tissue. You basically break it down and you do a process of elimination and you will have connective tissues. Now for connective tissues, you can go down one of five paths. You can go down and get more specific and talk about loose connective tissue proper, or you can go dense connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone, or blood. And depending on the characteristics you have, you will go down one of these paths. So let's start with loose connective tissue proper. If you look at a histology slide and you see some pretty obvious cells, you see fibers, and there's a fair bit of open space, and of course the open space is filled with fluid, then that's loose connective tissue proper. Loose implies looseness or openness. So again, if you see cells, you see fibers, and you see open space, that's loose connective tissue proper. Now, if you see cells, you see fibers, but no open space, and that's dense connective tissue. Dense implies denseness and therefore not much open space. So when you look at loose connective tissue proper or dense connective tissue proper, it's pretty clear what is what category. You're really looking for, is there open space or is there not open space? Now, what about if you don't see much open space, or maybe it looks like open space, but you see things called lacunae. Now, if you see large sacs that in essence sort of look like this, that's a lacuna. And a lacuna is sort of this bubble-like sac with a cell in it. That will tell you that it is cartilage. Now, fibers may or may not be there. And that will give you cartilage. Now, what about bone? Well, bone's pretty easy to identify. If you see 
a central canal with rings going around. That's bone. Nice and easy. Blood is another easy connective tissue. If you see a bunch of open space, of course that's blood plasma, with lots of different cells, lots of cells that look different from each other, that's blood. Because again, of course, in blood, you're going to see erythrocytes, or blood cells. You will see white blood cells that might look like that. You will see white blood cells that may look like that. You're going to see a multitude of different cells. You might even see some platelets, which are, in essence, just cell fragments. And you can't see the fibers in blood. And that's blood. So bone and blood are really pretty easy. Cartilage, you look for the lacunae. Dense connective tissue, you look for the fibers, some cells, but you don't have much open space. Loose connective tissue, you look for the cells, multiple different fibers, sizes, and plenty of open space. And then you go down that path. So let's say you saw some cells, you saw a bunch of fibers, you have a bunch of open space, that's loose connective tissue proper. Now, you can go down another path. And you can get more specific. You can look at areolar loose connective tissue. You can go down to adipose loose connective tissue. Or you can go down to reticular loose connective tissue. Areolar loose connective tissue, because it is within the loose connective tissue proper category, you can see cells, you can see fibers, and more specifically, you can see three fiber types. For the three fiber types, you will see Thick fibers, which are collagen, moderately sized fibers, that will be elastin, and very thin fibers called reticular fibers. And of course, you have the open space because this is a loose connective tissue after all. Now what about adipose? Well, adipose, obviously, since it's part of loose connective tissue proper, you will see cells. And these cells are quite obvious. They're big pillow-shaped sacs filled with triglycerides. Now, there are some fibers but they're sometimes hard to make out. And there is open space. Now the open space really is going to be just based on the size of those big pillowy sacs that are cells. But adipose really looks pretty unique on its own. Now the last type of loose connective tissue proper you have is reticular. You see cells, again because it's part of loose connective tissue proper. Interestingly, some of the cells that you see are not just fibrocytes or connective tissue cells, but you're gonna see some red blood cells. So I'm gonna add that as a separate list here, separate line. You will also see fibers, specifically reticular fibers, the thin fibers. And being loose connective tissue, You've got open space. So what you have here is for loose connective tissue proper, you look for open space, cells, and some fibers. Do you see all three fiber types, collagen, elastin, and fiber and reticular? That's areolar. If you don't see many fibers, but you see big pillowy sacs like for cells, 
That's adipose. Do you see red blood cells in thin fibers? That's reticular. That's reticular loose connective tissue. And that's the process of elimination that you use to get to the specific tissue types. Now what about dense connective tissue proper? You'd use the same basis for getting to the specific dense connective tissue types. You can go to dense regular, dense irregular, or you can go dense elastic. Dense regular, you can see cells, you can see fibers, but there's no open space. That's what makes it dense connective tissue proper. Now what makes it dense regular is the fact that you will see the fibers, which are collagen mostly, all going in one direction. And again, there's very little open space. So by no, you mean very little. Dense irregular, you've got fibers going in multiple directions, hence the irregular part of it. But you still have little to no open space, hence why it's dense connective tissue proper. And then lastly, you've got elastic. And for elastic, you're looking for little to no open space. And the fibers you're looking for are elastin fibers. So they're gonna be squiggly lines. And oftentimes, the squiggly lines will go around some open cavity. So there you have the three different types of dense connective tissue proper. Again, a process of elimination to get down to the specific tissue type. Now lastly here, we have cartilage. And again, you're looking for lacunae. If you see large lacunae, these sacs with a cell in the middle, that's cartilage compared to the others. Now for cartilage, you can go hyaline, elastic, or fibro. Now what you want to start with is how big, relatively speaking, are these lacunae? Are they moderately sized to large or are they small? If you see fairly large lacunae, it could be hyaline or it could be elastic. If there are a bunch of small lacunae, that's fibro. So here, look at the lacunae size first. Do you have a bunch of small lacunae with some fibers distributed? That's fibrocartilage. If you see moderately sized lacunae or large, that's either hyaline or elastic. Then from there, you look for the presence of fibers. If you see fibers throughout that are squiggly looking lines, that's elastic cartilage. If you don't see the elastin fibers, the squiggly lines, then that's hyaline cartilage. And there we have it. There you have connective tissues working down into loose connective tissue proper, dense connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone, and blood, and then you can get even more specific into areolar, adipose, and reticular loose, regular, irregular, and elastic dense, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilages. So I hope this video really significantly helps you understand connective tissues, how they're organized, how you can identify them on histology slides.